Praise God. Good to see each one in the house of God this morning to worship Him. And it's, it's, it's a blessing. We need to begin to realize it's a blessing Amen. when we're able to come to the house of God. Amen. And praise God. He gives us these opportunities to worship Him and make things right if things are not right. Praise Amen. God. Book of 2 Kings, the 2nd chapter. I'll read that first verse and then let you be seated. 2 Kings 2 and 1, And it came to pass, when the Lord would take up Elijah into heaven by a whirlwind, that Elijah went with Elisha from Gilgal. Praise God. Let's praise Him one more time. God, we love Him. God, we thank You for Your Spirit. God, we thank You for Your Word. God, we ask God that You just anoint God, use us for Thy glory and not hearts and ears to receive Your Word. We we'll praise You for it in Jesus' name. Praise God. You may be seated. Of course, many of you know the story how that uh, Elijah was taken up by the whirlwind, but he had a, uh, a young man that followed him and ministered to him by the name of Elisha. And Elisha was, was, was uh, following Elijah. But look here in, in verse 2. Elijah said to Elisha, Terry, here I pray thee, for the Lord has sent me to Bethel. And Elisha said unto him, As the Lord liveth, as thy soul liveth, I will not leave thee. So they went down to Bethel. For just a little while this morning, I, I want to I wanna preach to you uh, this thought going on to a double portion. Yeah. Going on to a double portion, we find that as, he, as Elijah, Elijah knew that he was soon going to be taken away, that uh, uh, he, he was going up in the world, and somehow he knew he was fixing to leave there. And Elijah was following him, and he told uh, Elisha, he said, you, Elijah told Elisha, you stay here, you tear me here. Uh, for the Lord has sent me to Bethel. And Elijah returned and replied, said, No, as the Lord liveth, as I so liveth, I'm going to go with you. I'm not going to leave you. Right. I'm going to go with you. So they went down to Bethel. It was the start of their journey. They went down to Bethel. If you'll, if you'll begin to, 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 to study in the Word of God, and, and, and most of you know that the word Bethel means house of God, so they were going to the house of God. And Elisha wasn't going to leave him. He said, I'm going with you. And the sons of the prophets that were at Bethel came forth to Elisha and said unto him, Knowest thou that the Lord will, uh, will take away thy master from thy head today? And he said, Yeah, I know it. Hold your, hold your peace. They, they, they wasn't telling Elisha anything that he didn't already know. He said, I know he's going to be taken up, but I'm going to stick with him. I'm still going to stay with him. All right. I'm still going, you know, regardless, I'm still, you know, I'm still going to stay with him. And, and so they continued on their journey. He said, and Elijah said unto him, Elisha, tarry here. I pray thee, for the Lord has sent me to Jericho. And he said, as the Lord liveth, as I so liveth, I will not leave thee. So they came to Jericho. Now, the word Jericho, uh, figuratively speaking sometimes, the word Jericho from, from the Hebrew means to anticipate or to enjoy. So, so he left, they left the house of God with anticipation of what was going to take place and what was going to happen. Elisha left the house of God with, with an anticipation or, or enjoying his journey with Elijah. He said... So here comes the sons of the prophets again. Have you ever noticed somebody any time, any time you're trying to live for God, any time you're trying to do right, somebody always comes along and tries to discourage you? Huh? Well, you won't ever make it. You won't ever be able to do that. You won't ever be able to walk with God. You won't ever be able to live for God. Here comes the sons of the prophets that were Jericho came to Elisha and said to him, Knowest thou not 
that the Lord will take away thy master from thy head today? And he answered, Yeah, I, I know it. Hold your peace. And Elijah said unto him, Tarry, I pray thee, here for the Lord has sent me to Jordan. So we find three different places that, that, that the Lord has sent Elijah. And every time he say, he's telling Elijah, you, you stay here because I'm going to Bethel. No, I'm not. I'm going to go with you to Bethel, which was the house of God. Translated, you know, means house of God. Of course, it was the name of the town, that, but, but the word means house of God. All right, we're going to Jericho. So he went to, to Jericho, which could be interpreted as, a, as a, a, to enjoy or as anticipation. And now they're coming to Jordan. Now they're coming to Jordan. And Elisha's still with him. Elisha's still with Elijah. Now Jordan, figuratively speaking again, means to cast down or descend or to fall down. Stumbling block. A stumbling block. See, we start our walk with God sometimes, man, we're all excited. And most time when people start their walk with God, they start to do the house of God. You know, in all the excitement, in all, you know, man, just enthused in the enjoyment in worshiping and serving God. And the next thing you know, here comes Jordan. They're facing the Jordan. Which means to descend or to fall down and be cast down. See, too many people stop when they get to Jordan. You know, they've been up, they've been up here on this height. They've been up here on the on this level and high, and all of a sudden they fell down. And that's where a lot of them want to stop. Right. You know, the first the first real obstacle that they face in their walk with God, they want to they want to stop in Jordan. Elijah said unto him again, Terry, I pray thee here, for the Lord has sent me to Jordan. And he said, As I as the Lord liveth, as I so liveth, I will not leave thee. And I did this, man, I really like this first. And they too went on. Yeah. <laughs> they too went on. Hey, if we could ever, if we could ever get it in our hearts, never get it in our minds, no matter what comes our way, no matter what we're going to face, that no matter what, you know. The outcome may be. I'm still going on with Jesus. They too went on. He wasn't going to let him go by himself. By himself. They too went on. <coughs> Fifty men of the sons of the prophets went and stood, stood to view far off. And they, they too stood by Jordan. And Elijah took his mantle, wrapped it together and smoked the waters. They were divided hither and thither. So that they too went over on dry ground. It came to pass when they were going over that Elijah said unto Elisha, I, I, I figure by now he, real, uh, uh, he realized that Elisha had passed the test because he stuck with him through thick and thin. Stuck with him through the good times as well as the bad times. Elisha had stuck with him and followed him and finally, he finally as, as they as it came to pass, when they were going over, they crossed over Jordan, that Elijah said unto Elijah, Ask what I shall do for thee before I be taken away from thee. And Elijah said, I pray thee, let a double portion of thy spirit be upon me. If somehow we could get a desire in our hearts that... The, the, listen, the object of this is not to see how much we can get away with and still call herself a Christian or living for God. The object of this being in this game, the object of following Jesus is to see how close we can get to Him. All right. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Not how far away we can stay away from Him and still call ourselves living for God or call ourselves a Christian. The object of this game is to see how close I can get with Jesus. And the only way I'm going to do that is stay with Him wherever He needs me. Stay with him. Yeah. So he said, and he said, but well, you've asked a hard thing, nevertheless, if thou see me, when I'm taken away from thee, it shall be so unto thee, but if not, it shall not be so. Now you, you know now that Elisha is not going to let him out of his sight. 
He's not going to let any life out of it. He said, if you see me, what you ask for, if you see me when I go, what you ask for is going to be granted to you. That's the way it's going to be. So it came to pass, and here, here's the key. And it came to pass as they still went on. Hmm? What? What, what, if, what if Elijah had stayed back on the other side of Jordan? When things had got <coughs> pretty low. Or maybe he fell down a time or two. What if he just decided, well, I'm just going to stay here. It's not worth it. But the Bible said it came to pass as they still went on. Anybody still going on for Jesus this morning? Yeah. As they still went on. came to pass as they still went on and talked that behold there appeared a chariot of fire and horses of fire and parted them both asunder and Elijah went up to went up by a whirlwind into heaven but look what happened and Elijah saw it Elijah saw it he cried my father my father the chariot of Israel and the horsemen thereof and he saw him no more and he took hold of his own clothes and rent them in two pieces he took up also the mantle of Elijah that fell from him and went back and stood by the bank of Jordan. In other words, that, that mantle fell off of Elijah. I call it the mantle of anointing because that was the same mantle that touched Elisha's shoulders as, as when Elijah passed by and when, he was, when Elisha was flying in the field. He felt something there that made him want to follow Elijah wherever he went. The mantle of anointing, and he 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 had taken it up. Church, young people, you don't realize one of these days these older saints, us older saints, are not always going to be around. We're going to go on and meet God. Somebody got to step up and take hold of the mantle of anointing to be on the word of God. And he took that mantle. He took the mantle of Elisha, Elijah that fell from him and smote the water and said, Where is the Lord God of Elijah? When he also had smitten the waters, they parted hither and thither. And Elisha went over. Praise God. He, he had received what he had asked for because he was willing to follow Elijah all the way until the end. There, there, there were times he could have stayed where he was at. Hmm. Some of you are stuck where you're at because you're simply not willing to move up. Hmm. But Elisha had a goal in mind. I want a double portion of that spirit that is up on Elijah. And because of his desire, how many know that, that revival starts within us right. when our desire for God increases? Right. I'm, I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to have revival in my life till my desire for God increases. That's why, that's why so many of us are stuck where we're at because our desire for God hadn't increased yet. Yes, sir. I just said, I, I want a double portion of that spirit. Now, I'm going to stay with him. I want a double portion of it. See, so, sometimes... Sometimes we've got to step out of our comfort zone. Come on. Amen. Come on. And go on to the next level of worship. Right. Amen. You, how, many, how, many know, how many know we get stuck in a routine of worship sometimes? Right. right. Yeah. Because there's just certain things we're going to do. There's just... There's just uh, a certain distance we're going to go with God. I 
Huh? Mm-hmm. And we're not we're not ready to move up yet to that next level. We're not quite ready for that double portion because it may require a little more commitment out of it.
Elisha, you stay here. Never, never did it say where Elisha turned back. It said they too went on. They too went on. But the Bible said these, many of the disciples went back and walked no more with him. Walk no more with him. Then Jesus, then said Jesus unto the twelve, Will you also go away? Then Simon Peter answered, Lord, to whom shall we go? Thou hast the words of eternal life. Let me ask you something. If you walk away from this, where are you going to go? You walk away from God, where are you going to go? Huh. Where are you going to go? He's got the words to eternal life. Amen. He's got the words to eternal life. He said, We believe and assure that thou art that Christ, the Son of the living God. He said, We, we, we believe who you are. We believe who you are. But you see, He was preparing them also, just as Elijah prepared Elisha for his going away. Jesus was preparing his disciples for his going away. He was training them. He was teaching them. He was showing them not only who he was, but what he was to face. And he would soon be taken from them. <coughs> but he said, he began to teach them also. He said, if I go away, I'm not going to leave you comfortless. I'm going to send you another comfort, which is the Holy Ghost. Amen. Huh? Amen. Huh? I want a double portion of that. I want, I want a double portion of that spirit that's on you, Jesus. All right. Amen. He said, I'm not only going to be with you, I'm going to be in you. Right. He began to prepare. They're trying to prepare them for what was about to take place. Matter of fact, in, in John 37, uh, John 7, chapter. Verse 37, In the last day of the great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried, saying, If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. He that believeth on me, as the Scripture has said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. This spake he of the Spirit which they that believe on him should receive, for the Holy Ghost was not yet given, because that Jesus was not yet glorified. He said, come on, you're that following me. Come on. Come on and follow me. Take up your cross and follow me. But he said, I, I'm going to send you a comfort. I'm going to send you a comfort. He began to prepare for the time of his crucifixion that he was going away. But look what happened. In Acts, the fourth chapter, this was after he was crucified. He appeared back to them. Being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, you've heard of me. I've already told you about this. I've already told you about this. See, many of them turned back and got, never, never, never got to experience what these that were still following him were about to experience. Because they stopped short of the blessings of God. Because the Word got a little too hard. And the way got a little too rough. Yet they stopped before they got to the double portion. He said, For John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. When they therefore would come together, they asked him, saying, Lord, without at this time restore again thy kingdom to Israel. But he went on to tell them, he said, but you know, you're going to receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. He began
began to, to tell them what was about to take place and what, what was about to happen. But look, let me, let me drop down to verse 9. And when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of that sight. While they beheld, while they were, they were looking on him, they saw him, listen, they saw him go up. Amen. They saw, but he'd already given them instructions. One, you, you, you go into the city of Jerusalem and you carry that, you be endued with power from on high. I've got something for you. I've got a medal of anointing for you if you'll go into the upper room and wait on it. All right. Come on there. I've got something there for you. Amen. Yeah. Hey, they not only followed him to the end, to the crucifixion, to the place he was taken away, they saw him go up. Yes, sir. Guess what they did? They went on. Yeah. Became obedient to the Word of God and followed Him. Then they went into the upper room to wait. To wait. Of course, you know what Acts second chapter says. For the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire and set upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And you know the story how, how that the Holy Ghost fell and it was lodged abroad and they all came together to see what was going on in the upper room. And they began to question what was going on and Peter began to tell them, this is that that was spoken of by the prophet Joel saying, Behold, this shall come to pass in the last day. I'll pour out my spirit and he was upon all flesh. And he went on to instruct them and preach to them Jesus Christ and him crucified. And the Bible said, when they became pricked in their hearts, in verse 37 of it. And when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart. And said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? Then Peter said unto them, Repent, be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. For the promise is unto you, to your children, and all that are far off, even as many as of the Lord our God shall call. Somebody said, Well, we already know that. We already, we've already heard that. And you preach that all the time. All the time. But I'm here to tell you, don't stop short of the blessings of God. What are you trying to say? Go on to the double portion. Don't stay at Bethel. Don't, don't stay back where you started from. Go on to Jericho. Amen. And then from there, go on to Jordan. And then be bold enough or brave enough to cross over Jordan into the land that God has promised you. Yeah. To a double portion. In other words, if I if you've repented, don't stop that repentance. Amen. Go on and be baptized in Jesus' name. Amen. If you stop that baptism, don't stop there. Go on to the double portion that God will pour His Spirit and the Holy Ghost out upon you. Go on and receive everything that God has got for you. Don't stop short. Don't sell yourself short. That's right. Don't sell yourself short. Amen. Elisha, if he'd have stopped mm -hmm. at any of those places, would have not seen Elijah go up and would have not have received that mail of anointing that came back to earth. Would not have received that double portion. We, we, we fall short. Don't fall short of what God. And my Lord, I, I got. I'm about halfway through. It's getting close to play. I'm trying. I, listen, I'm trying to get some more here. So I'll hurry. I'll hurry. Ezekiel 47. I said afterward, he brought me again unto the door of the house, and whole waters issued out of the house. But what house? The house of God. And he, afterward, he brought me again to the door of the house, and behold, the waters issued out from under the threshold of the house of God. Mm -hmm. Living water. Amen. Living water. The water 
that I need you shall be a well of living water springing up into everlasting life. Yeah. Where did those, water, those waters issued out from the house of God? Then he, then he brought me, let, let me just, you know, and the waters came down from on the right side of the house at the south side of the altar. Then brought he me out of the way of the gate northward and led me about the way without unto the other gate by the way that looketh eastward. And behold, there ran out waters on the right side. And when the man that had the line in his hand went forth eastward, he measured a thousand cubits and he brought me through the waters. And the water were to the ankle. Now I'm fixing to ask you, are you standing on the bank? Or have you been bold enough to get out the ankle deep water yet? All right. Come on. Come on. Come on. I'm not about going on to a double portion. Yeah. And he measured a thousand and he brought me through the waters, and the waters were to the knees. Get a little bolder, get a little closer. Somebody, somebody done turned around and run back to the bank saying, I can't swim. Hmm? Afraid you're going to drown in knee deep water. Amen. And again, he measured a thousand and brought me through, and the waters were to the loins. After he measured a thousand, it was a river that. I could not pass over for the waters were risen, waters to swim in, and that river could not be passed over. Praise God. Church, I'm going to tell you, it's, it's time you've got a determination in your heart right. and in your mind that you're going to get everything that God has got for you and not be afraid to get out in the waters and swim in. Amen. We, we don't have time to play church anymore. That's right. We, we don't have time for church just to be a sideline. Amen. Huh? God has to be your life. Living for God has to be your life. Yes, God sir. has to be number one in your life. Yes, then you sir. build around God. Amen. You put first, then you'll be, you build your life around God. Don't try to build God around your life. Yes. Amen. Oh, there was water, water to swim in. He said, Son of man, as I've seen this, then he brought me and caused me to return to the brink of the river. Now when I had returned, behold, at the bank of the river were very many trees on the one side and on the other. Then he said unto me, These waters issue out toward the east country. Go down into the desert and go into the sea. Which being brought forth into the sea, the waters shall be healed. It shall come to pass that every, everything that liveth which moveth, whether swear the river shall come, shall live, and there shall be a very great multitude of fish, because these waters shall come thither, for they shall be healed, and everything shall live, whether the river cometh. Out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. Church, we need to get to the place that we let the Holy Ghost flow, that it touches the lives of those around us. I'm down to my last one. Isaiah 10 and 27. This shall come to pass in that day that the burden shall be taken away from off thy shoulder. The enemy's burden. The enemy's burden. And his yoke from off thy neck. And the yoke shall be destroyed, yeah, yeah. annihilated. Yeah, yeah. Not just broken, destroyed. The yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. Huh? Huh? Amen. Listen. The deeper that you go in God, the deeper, the closer that you get to God, 
the greater the anointing. You got yokes you need destroyed out of your life? Get to the place that the anointing of God comes on your life. Amen. So I said, what is the anointing? It means a gift. And ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. It means a gift, a special endowment, an anointing. Special endowment. You shall receive power after the Holy Ghost. You need some yokes destroyed in your life. Go deeper in the anointing. All right. I said, you need some yokes destroyed in your life. Go deeper in the anointing. Get to the place of that double portion in God that when you walk to the brink of the river of Jordan, that you can test that alone and you can walk across on Jesus. The devil wants to do nothing but steal, kill, and destroy you. But when I've got the anointing of God on me, when you've got the anointing of God on you, it begins to break those chains, it begins to destroy those yokes. Hallelujah. And you can begin to be set free that you might worship God and live for God and follow God like God intends for you to do. Going on to don't stop it, Bethel. Don't stop at that first initial experience. I'm feeling the presence of God, but get on out from that ankle deep water yeah. into water that you can swim in. Praise yeah. God. Thank you, Lord. But see, the question becomes how bad do you want it? Huh? How bad do you want that anointing? How bad do you want those yokes to destroy in your life? Let's all stand. Our Lord. Aren't you about ready to move up? Been, been, been in that place too long. Been in that rut too long. Been halfway in just too long. Uh, halfway in is still halfway out. Ready to go all the way with Jesus. <laughs> Just want to draw closer to it. Just want to feel the greater anointing. Why don't you come while they sing this morning? Yeah.